welcome all of you to the April 4th meeting of the Barcelona County Commissioners, and I would invite you to join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And also please join us in a moment of silence for all those who have who serve our country both here and abroad, and especially for those who have given their lives for us. Thank you. Okay, is um, there any public comment on any issues? Yes, Jerry. I just wanted to invite you to a forum on the climate change that the league is doing in April 28th. Okay. Again, Saturday. Saturday, April 28th. Great. Thank you. Very okay. good. It will be a most interesting program. <laughs> I would think. Thank you, Jerry. You have some oh, good. very good um, speakers. Saturday, April 28th from 10 to noon at the Harwich Community Center. For anyone here who is interested, that would be, uh, I'm sure that would be. Can we ahead of with Paul, along with Paul Great. and uh, from the National Sea Shore to talk about how vulnerable mm -hmm. our Cape is with the kind of weather we've been having and can look forward to. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Well, we certainly appreciate all the good work that the League of Women Voters does. Okay, you we really keep the important issues right in front of us where they need to be and so that we never forget them and that we consider them when we make policy and when we make decisions and also uh, the fact that it's they're educational and they keep us abreast of things we need to know when policy is being made. So Our pressure really is public education. Mm -hmm. We do take decisions based on consensus. Uh, even so, we want everybody to know all the facts and make up their own lives. So thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else who would uh, care to speak on a public comment? Well, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you again. It's like we have this uh, this group of people that come each week, and it's kind of nice. And today we are going to take up uh, one of the uh, probably more contentious recommendations from the special commission. And, uh, and that is the issue of governance. Um, I, I do want to say, though, before we start, that um, there have been some questions asked about how this commission was actually set up. And this came about from two groups of people, two strong groups of people, the League of Women Voters of Cape Cod and the Business Roundtable, who uh, over the months and months really pushed, met with the commissioners, sometimes uh, as, as a group and sometimes individually, to encourage us to really take a look at how government works on Cape Cod. And I think that was really the impetus for us to, to figure out what might be the best way to do this. And so we spoke with Henri Rauschenbach and Rob O'Leary as former state senators and said they would be two good people to chair such a group. And we asked them to look for members, look for people that they thought would work well together. People who had a good history of Cape Cod, who were active on Cape Cod, who, who, who were either in, um, in agencies or organizations or who actually had worked in government at some level. And so he put together this great group of people with various strengths and experiences. And uh, they gave us a list of, the, of each of those individuals and said, what do you think of this group? And we said, we think it's a great group. So we did not officially appoint them. We concurred with the uh, outreach that uh, both Henri and Rob had done in terms of bringing this group together. So that's how it all started. And I just wanted to make it clear because sometimes people think we appointed them. And that has a lot of pitfalls, as you might know, when you appoint your own people. Well, that doesn't always work well. And so we wanted it to be the, the group that, that the co-chairs thought that they would bring the most to the process. Uh, I did one, let me add one thing since I was chair at that time, uh, that uh, when we formally voted to approve the charge, 
the charge was very clear of what our expectations were of the group that had been recruited by by uh, Rob and by uh, by Henri, so that uh, when they came with the report, if we were to say that's not what we asked for, at least they had had some they had some evidence of what we were asking for. So uh, with that, uh, that uh, mm -hmm. so I, I think that since it was not intended to be a committee, an authority to uh, let's say to, uh, to to act to let's say to uh, to do let's say, to, of their own authority, they were making a recommendation, and I think that we all would agree that that would be the easiest way to do it. Okay, so I thought in terms of how this discussion might go today is that we could maybe separate the, the recommendation regarding the county commissioners and the recommendation regarding the assembly of delegates. And I thought we should start with the, the recommendation uh, related to county commissioners is that there be five county commissioners elected from districts and two elected at large. Uh, tying into that is that the that the executive functions of the county, most of the executive functions of the county, would be uh, would sit within the in the uh, job description of a county executive, and so the county commissioners would not have the same executive authorities we have today, which are very broad and very specific. They're broad and specific at the same time. They're they sometimes they're detailed within the organization that may or may not make sense. So I thought what we could do is start with the recommendation on the county commissioners and, and, and have the discussion in two areas. The first being, what is good about the present system? You know, what, are, what, what good things happen because of this structure? And then, what are the issues with it? What are some of the problems? What are some of the things that don't work very well or that impede the work of uh, county government because of the current structure. So um, I think we have pretty much agreed that um, that we support the recommendation of five commission. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. You don't. I have something to say about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, Can I just before we get to sure. that, I just want to give some background. Now, okay. Maybe not everybody's sort of familiar with where we are now and how we got to this structure. Okay. So, Go back before the existing charter, back in, before 1988, when this term came in. Um, counties in Massachusetts were governed by really two statutes, um, Mass General Law Chapter 34 and 35, and I get mixed up as to which one is which. One of them sort of has to do with finance, the other has to do with county commissioners. And that statute, going way back in time, I, I couldn't even tell you how far back, but probably into the 17th or 18th century um, vests all of the power with the county commissioners, typically three county commissioners. And so when time went on and the, the um, sort of our founding fathers back in the 80s decided to do a regional government, um, Cape Cod regional government in Barnesville County, they decided to sort of continue that model with the three strong county commissioners who hold the executive power, and they put in place a legislative body that really dealt with the budget and some other specific legislative tasks that are in the charter, the Assembly of Delegates. And so that's how this sort of model came about. So it did sort of mirror what had traditionally been county government in Massachusetts, and that's a strong executive three county commission. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have today, a strong executive to the county commissioners. So, Bill, you said you wanted okay, well, to make some comments. Yes, yes I did, because uh, one, of the, you know, one of the reasons it was given by the special commission was that, uh, that the way, in the process of getting business done uh, by the assembly, uh, that the uh, assembly had been, let's say, uh, suggested to be an impediment uh, to that process. And my concern is this, that I've been doing this for about 14 years now. And in, the, in that time, the Assembly of Delegates has only uh, not supported the budget once. And even at that time, we had votes to support the, uh, you know, the override of the disapproval. So if we were to say that, you know, that the, re the replacement that's being suggested would make things smoother, then I think that we have to, you know, we have to deal, with, you know, deal with the experience that, you know, that we've seen. 
There's other things that, you know, that I'm very concerned with as we go forward, and that is that if this is being done to reduce the cost of government, then I think that we need to know what it will well, cost. I, I thought it would be more helpful if we started with what's good about what we're doing now before we get to the change. You know, I think you have to... Well, that's what been. I think I brought that up. You know, that right now, in the political structure that we have, mm -hmm. there seems to be an adequate uh, check. Uh, the Assembly of Delegates was originally formed to well, provide a... I, I, I want, I'm trying to frame the discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't want... I think... Now, you can disagree with me if you want, but I was thinking it would work better if we define the first part of our discussion only to the county commissioners and the fact that there is... Uh, strong executive powers with us, not the Assembly of Delegates yet, because that's a different issue. Mm -hmm. But to look at what our roles are as county commissioners, as strong executives, the fact that we have, um, there are three of us, and we actually are uh, elected by all of the citizens of Cape Cod. So we have a very broad, large constituency that three people really have to meet and are expected to meet. And it's, I mean, I, it's not that I don't like it, I like it a lot, but is, is it really working? So that's what I thought we need to discuss. What's good about what we have now, and what doesn't work as well, and how would this recommendation help us be more responsive to the constituency on the case by having, uh, what is it, uh, five elected uh, by district and two at large, by having districts where you could really be responsible for a district, really communicate well. So I'm thinking what's good about what we have now and what would make it better if we went to the new model that's being proposed for the county commissioners. Okay, for the county commissioners. Just for the county commissioners. Okay. I found that when I ran for county commissioner across the county, uh, that the, in the first time that I ran, that I found that in the process of getting visibility for my candidacy, it forced me to find out an awful lot about what was going on in other parts of the Cape, both from, uh, from the point of view of, uh, since I came from Harwich, to find out more about what was going on in the Lower Cape and finding out what was going on in the Mid and the Upper Cape. And in that education, if you will, uh, it made me more aware of issues that were similar in all parts of the Cape. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, I'd always believed that the process of recruiting somebody to run for county commissioner meant that you had to have someone that could spend the time that it takes to do the job. And if you're running across the county, there is a you know there is the investment of time, energy, and treasure to do that. So that, in principle, the idea of having five districts of county commissioners as the executive is one that has a certain amount of appeal to me. So if you were to take the recommendation you know, that was made by the special commission and just said that we were going to expand the executive branch from three to five, I think that that has a lot of merit. And the merit, in my mind, would be that you would be representing a district, you would have to get, uh, let's say, support from two other districts in order to move something forward for, you know, for the, uh, you know, for the community. I found that, mentioning my service on the Assembly of Delegates, I found that I, be, I believe, and, and, and I was guided by, you know, by, uh, you know, my fellow members, especially when I see one of, you know, a person that served, you know, Mary, uh, Mary Lutetta and I served on a, on a committee together, and I found that, that while we both were concerned about regional issues, we are also concerned that what effect would it have on the town that we represented, but the first thought that we had was, are we doing something that, let's say, that supports regional issues. So the idea of an executive that, you know, that support, you know, that was from a district doesn't mean it would be parochial in a district. I think it would inform the democratic process of giving someone who could give strong representation to the area that, which I think was part of, part of what I heard from the special commission was that they felt that that would inform the, uh, you know, the, uh, the representation. Now, doing that uh, would be a change that, uh, that would help, I think, uh, interest people in running for the executive branch. Uh, and, I, and I think that uh, by doing that, I think they, that would, in effect, answer the questions you know, that had been raised about uh, uh, whether or not people were represented. Because if you, and I, this goes back to when uh, 
the first elected position that I had, I was, I was elected as a cemetery commissioner, and I made some proposals that the selectmen didn't like, and the charter was changed so that my job wasn't an elected job anymore. And when I asked for a reappointment or an appointment as a, as a, as a, as a cemetery commissioner, they didn't re, they didn't appoint me, but I would have been reelected. So uh, they were streamlining their process uh, with regard to running the operation, but I don't think it served you know, people well. And as a matter of fact, if they if they had appointed me, I probably would have stayed there, and you wouldn't see me. So if we change the charter so that you can't run again, that's right. a strength. Sure <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm sure that many would welcome that. But but anyway, but getting getting back to the point, if this is about the balance between a check, mm -hmm. let's say a uh, an executive that is able to meet and perhaps have a little discussion and a little lobbying, if you will, about issues. I think you could do that with a five-member, you know, uh, among two but people. this is a seven-member. Well, no, total seven-member. Okay, well, I, I don't like that. You don't like I the don't seven. Like I, like, I, like I figured that you didn't like the seven. Okay. Right. I just, you like the five, five with five district. in five districts. Right, okay. okay. That, but as an executive. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're they're proposing as now, a. Now, when you say executive, that would have to be defined, because uh, we, because many of the executive functions that are being proposed would transfer to the to the county executive. There would be executive functions for the commissioners, but they would be slightly different from what they are now. It's really policy making. It's more policy making, and yeah. some executive functions, and then the legislative functions as well. Well, I've served on private sector boards. Uh, the, uh, the board of directors sets policy and appoints a, a, a chief operating officer. And, and in that appointment, the chief operating officer has the responsibility of, to, uh, say, delivering the policy mm -hmm. of the board. In other well, words, similar to towns, yeah. municipalities. Yeah. Is pretty and, much and, that I, and I think that that you know that has been you know, has been a good model. It allows for let's say I mean, for a uh, let's say for a professional uh, to be hired to do things. At the same time. I thought it had a lot of merit in some of the. I gave you, Kate, I gave you uh, the uh, copy of the uh, of what other companies had done, the case studies, and in that case study, uh, they all seemed to revolve around the need for a strong executive, and in many cases, it was a unique executive. Uh, they seemed to lean towards an elected rather than appointed, and they spoke about uh, someone needing to be a you know, spokesperson. I feel, for example, when we change the paradigm over the state by commission from uh, regulation supported by planning to planning supported by regulation, that Paul, you know, in, in what he did, became the spokesperson for the Cape Cod Commission. And I think to the benefit not only of the Cape Cod Commission, but also to our benefit, because he was spending his time as the face of the Cape Cod Commission rather than, you know, rather than having a regulatory body that, you know, the people approach without having a person that could be identified as representing you. So I, I think there's some merit in, you know, in, in having someone who is a spokesperson, but that can be an appointed person. Uh, well, <coughs> if I can just have to, uh, pick up there, I mean, he is an appointed person, and I think that that's what gives him the um, ability to be able to go out and be a spokesperson and, uh, and to set a vision that is a long-term vision, not um, one that's based on electoral years. So um, I think that having, first of all, you know, this really became clear with, to me when, we, when Charlie Sumner sort of went over the history of the boards of selectmen. They were all full-time selectmen positions with a... Uh, not an executive power uh, person that managed the day-to-day -day operations. They changed to a more professional model so that the towns could function on a day-to-day -day basis with the person in charge to be able to handle those functions and their now policy and review of that budget. Um, that allows the towns to be able to really look into uh, what their needs are and to be a little bit more agile on a day-to-day -day basis. I, um, I believe that... Uh, you know, we're using the word executive, uh, man, uh, an executive uh, authority, you know, giving it to an executive, I think what the word is, but administrator. But I think that uh, it really is a county manager is what that position is. 
And um, so that manager would have the executive day-to-day -day authority to be able to address those issues. As it stands now, Mark has some of our authority so that he can do that on a daily day basis. But when it comes to the big things and the big decisions, it's very slow and it's very arduous because we're here once a week and uh, that's when those decisions are made. I mean, we do a lot of things during the week, but the decisions are made once a week at best and a lot of times they're put off a week, two weeks. But things can take a lot longer that could happen much more largely. The with a thing I liked about being um, set a county a commissioner that had to run a county race is that um, it taught me, as you say, it, about I, I don't, um, don't represent. Um, I would have to really take a look at the two, uh, not meet the, you know, go into those 15 towns. I did, I know that uh, everyone here did. And uh, it just does make you aware that there are differences and similarities. And, and it helps you see where, where are those regional issues that we can bring together and what are really town centric. So there is a benefit to the, the countywide race. However, it is exhausting. Um, you don't have a lot of, you, you don't have, it's, it's not as though you're uh, even meeting a salary to make all of that, um, to help you benefit from that, that you would even if you were a representative. So, and you have a much bigger district. So it's, it is very time consuming, it's very exhausting, uh, it's very enlightening and educational, but there is that part of it. So if you had five districts, how would you handle those two at large? How would that differ for them? I kind of like the two at large because those two at large would have that regional view to keep the five districts regional and not become districts onto themselves like a town could become a district, you know, a, a town centric. So that would have to be worked out how that would play out and I'm not sure how that would go. I do think that um, we have a budget that's about 24, we have evolved. So the county, you, you know, really sort of addressed human service needs education needs, the needs that were, um, you know, through the cooperative extension, uh, the regulatory part of it came on, and that might have been too heavy for many years, and not really have found its right footing, I think it has now in the last four or five years. But the other towns really did do sort of, um, uh, they were like help desks on different areas to the towns when they needed it, but you really weren't, uh, they're sort of like their own nice, departments to have, but there isn't a uh, pull-together vision of the county. Where are we going? So, um, and then you have the Assembly of Delegates, and that grew out, that didn't have, that wasn't part of the original county structure, that came a year or two later, and that was when the board, um, that was then uh, all made of professional, full-time selectmen, did not have the time to come and review the budget, be the sounding board of the three commissioners. Now that has changed, um, I, uh, our budget has grown, it was probably much smaller when you first started, so it's grown to 24 million. But 24 million is still one of the smallest budgets on the Cape, if you want to put it to the, and yet we have 18 people reviewing and trying to control some of that money. I think that's a lot for what it is. And um, I think it's, you know, just, in, and then it, it in the, the the board, and I will talk about the Assembly of Delegates a little bit. Those towns um, are, are weighted. I mean, when you represent a geography. Let's hold off on the Assembly okay, and, all right. and take that up. All right. But so, so my thought, so my feeling is by collapsing the two makes a lot of sense because it's more focused, it's more professional. Um, people, you know, they're saying to increase some of the salary. I don't think this is about cost, it's about efficiency and professional. Um, services and if you have a professional team that is on the job every day looking at the specifics that they have to you can see that what is happening even now times are changing there are lots of big issues that we have to come together on you need that um, appointed person that is a visionary but also skilled enough to be able to handle those things and to be able to garner understand how you um, by, by combining regional requests. It's all about cooperation. Uh, it, it, today's government isn't just the town of uh, Wellfleet is going to go and take on this initiative and we can go up to the state house and lobby for these things. You know, that's not going to, we're going to have very little SWAT if we, if, in comparison to uh, combining that voice with 
15 or 14 other voices or eight other voices. And um, so I think that, that that level of cooperation is now being built into the, the government as it stands. That is how you garner um, resources. That is how we got the, uh, the last grant that just came in for $500,000 because it was a regional effort. It was 14 towns signed up for this. The, the county sponsored it with the town of Yarmouth. And that is how we're going to bring more money in. So I don't think the cost is something that we have to be thinking of because I think if you're going in this way, more money will be able to be effectually come into the county and, and help us with those things. So to me, it, it just makes a lot of sense. I think having that type of professional operation gives more of an agility and flexibility to the county to address on a day-to-day -day basis those issues that come up and they can handle them on the spot as opposed to putting them off for a long time. We're the only board that's left that isn't gone to a professional model where all others have, and I think it's time for us to, to join the uh, you know, 21st century and, and look at what we have ahead of us. It's not the same as it was. I well, and, and, and I, I just wanted to add my two pieces yeah. and then we can discuss. Oh, yeah, my two pieces. Six <laughs> um, In thinking about, I'm thinking really about the idea of five or seven commissioners. <laughs> And one thing I think that is, um, uh, that is helpful to the voters is, if we have the other two, is that a voter can actually elect their sense of a majority. Um, well, because well, they, no, they would vote, uh, if you were voting in a district, you would vote one, but you would also vote, so you don't actually vote the majority, but you get to vote for three. And, um, and I think that, that's, that's good. That gives the voters a little more input into who the commissioners are. But in terms of, I'm thinking it in terms of how do we get the work done? And if you look at what we do now, we meet once a week. We're not here full time. And, um, and we, we deal with a lot of detail, but, um, but we're not engaged as much in the detail. I think what we find ourselves doing is creating uh, our own work based on our own interests and based on the uh, a liaison assignments that we have. Um, like, uh, like I'm with Children's Cove, and you're with the Arts Foundation. Bill has uh, the Compact and CVEC and, and no, others. I don't have no, you don't have CVEC. So <laughs> it's like we have these liaison assignments, but, but what do we do with it mm -hmm. at the end? So I think, I think the major issue that we really have is the challenge of communication. The challenge of communication just among us, among the staff here, and also among the community. Because when we communicate, we're pretty much communicating um, a lot of times our own opinions on things, or our own interests in things, as opposed to these are the, the uh, defined interests of the county. These are our goals, these are our objectives, and each of us are carrying these out in our own districts. We all know what we're doing. We all have a planned effort. Right now, it's kind of, if that's your liaison responsibility, you kind of do it however you want. But the people that you engage in on that liaison could come from all parts of the case. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing that happens if you have five commissioners who are policy makers and not executives is that you, you actually set up an, or, an organization where each commissioner is responsible for specific functions in the county. And when you're responsible for, uh, well, let's say, um, let me think of one. I'm going to send that third into the one. Um, well, let's say it's the human services. That, that that's one of your areas of responsibility. So you have to work with different people in order to accomplish that. But you're, you're like the convener because that's your responsibility as a commissioner. To, you convene your meetings, you run your meetings, you, you, um, you present budgets if there are budget uh, requirements. You present budgets to, um, to the full commission because the commission would be um, uh, putting those, uh, working on those budgets and putting them together as opposed to necessarily delegating all of the budget work say to the, uh, to the manager, you know, I think it, it really helps if you go online and look at counties around the country and read about their, their organizations and how they're set up 
and how each commissioner has specific responsibilities. And, it, and, and the fact that it's not once a week, you have to be there. I mean, you may meet once a week, but you have certain responsibilities every day of the week that you have to attend to. Uh, whatever those may be and however we would define those. So it isn't like you kind of make up your own work. Um, it's very well defined as part of the organization in the county. And then if you're representing the, the districts, you can go back to those districts and they, they blur the town lines. Obviously they will. There will be more than one town. So you establish your own relationship with the people in the districts and with their specific needs and what you bring back to them, in essence, and what you bring back from your district to the, to the full board of commissioners. I think, I think it really helps define the lines of communication. I think the needs of the district will be uh, uh, more, more understood. I think they will be uh, more clear. And, and then when we sit together, when the commissioners sit together to to advance those interests of the districts. We know exactly what we're doing because we're all doing the same things in our own district. Can I add on to yeah. that? Yeah. You know, you're hitting on a good point, and it's communication, and it's, um, and it's what your role is. And if there are five districts, those districts are the districts of, um, that are now representing um, a coalition of towns. And how is that, that representative, that one representative, going to relate the mission of the county, because you are county, you are part of the vision of the county. So how do you bring that vision to those five towns and help them see where the benefits and what they may feel are detriments? Mm -hmm. You can then bring that back to the other four districts that you're working with and say, this is the pros and the cons from what, from what I'm being able to bring together. As it stands now, there is, and, and I think Mary Lou and I have always agreed on this, there's a tendency by town by town, you keep going back to your town border and boundary and feeling like you are there to represent your town, but it's really, you are in a county, you are a county official who is to be representing the county stand to the town. And how does that, and, and try to be able to relate that vision. Right now, there really isn't that vision. There's, as I say, there's a, a nice set of very, very well-run departments, but are they unified in a, in a, in a vision, and is there a, uh, a real clear course for the company to go forward on? So that is where that communication and those lines may be better, because you now are, uh, you know, coming from the county to those five towns and working with them to, to uh, coalesce them and to bring them into where their the regional services will benefit them, what regional efforts will benefit, maybe even those, you know, that's, it, there's some towns, if they were Outer Cape representatives, there's needs there that could be the confederation of those towns going forward with a regional effort, or it could be part of the overall <coughs> regional effort. But then there will be much more clearly defined types of conversations. And, um, you know, that, that whole thing about being assigned to your interests might be, you know, change. I mean, those are the details that get worked out, you know, that, that devil in the details. But, but, but when we were talking, too, about last week, we talked about the reporting requirements, you know, with, with the wastewater. Mm -hmm. um, and that we're going to have each of us with the responsibilities we, that we agreed to last week are going to be responsible on a quarterly basis for reporting on these. And, and that could begin the, the more of the consolidation of our thinking around if we had five commissioners with districts, how, um, how, how effective that could be, uh, that, co that kind of communication. And having, having each commissioner, like for instance, take responsibility for transportation, like you are, because you, uh, you're already on the RTA board. And that's, I mean, actually, that's a real regional board. Actually, yeah. the only connection that the county has with transportation is through the Cape Cod Commission and a transportation committee over there, plus the money that the Cape Cod Commission gets from both the federal and state uh, to provide planning support for public transportation as well as participation in the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And I serve as your representative on the MPO, but we do not have a county representative on the RTA. And the reason is that the towns 
are given no, no. money off of their cherry, cherry seed cheek, and that's how that represent, representation comes. See, but I think that going forward, we would benefit from having a county presence on the RTA that was less tenuous than the one that you have now. Well, and you know, and that, that's the other piece of this. You look at all these different commissions and agencies and organizations and whatever you want to call it that are separately working on all these things, and yet, how do we bring them all together? I and I think when like you have... Make, 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 right? make a suggestion to you that, that when we create... Well, I'm not asking the question now, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think we want to get too detailed today. I think we want okay. to think but overall want, about the idea of five and two commissioners and how a county structure with five or two commissioners Although I would maybe. caution, maybe you shouldn't wed yourself to five and two. You sort of, that's, a, well, that's going that's to be right. no, detail. I'm not waiting yes. to Might be four that's and three, nice. or be, you sort of have to look at how the district I, yeah, And I was just kind of, of the understanding of, um, of how, I mean, I, I know people who've, who've worked, who've lived in counties that have an at-large and, and then the districts. I really have to have an understanding of the benefit of both of those boards to, to wed myself to one way or the other. But the fact of collapsing the two boards is appealing to me. I think it's much more efficient, and I think it's it would have a much more regional voice. Um, and and the one thing I will say about the, the board of commissioners that I think is not good is that three a, a board of three does not allow uh, discussion outside that that will. Um, be in, in uh, compliance with open meeting law. If you really want to have a conversation, you can have a conversation when there's five and say, this is how I feel about things, this is what you know, I think. You can have a conversation um, with two people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with, yeah. Another, with the yeah. one person. And, and, you can, and you can have that with you know, the other four people, and, and you can come to a consensus, and those people talk to each other. So everybody sort of knows what page they're on, whereas, we're sometimes, you know, we sort of know where we're going or what we want, but to really be able to state our feelings and to be able to, it, it's a little, it's a little, um, it's hard to do. And, it's also, and you can, and you can also feel like there's always like two against one. If there, now, if there isn't an agreement and whoever's that left out person on that idea will say, oh, that's, so it's just not, it doesn't, it doesn't create good, uh, Interrelationships. Yeah, but the without getting into too much detail, I would like to remind you that when we set a when we set a budget over there, we are setting a policy, and that policy is informed by the liaisons that we have with the different committees. Right. So that when when people come be, when our department managers come before us to talk about those projects that they're interested in, we are already aware of what uh, what their interest is, because we've been participating as you know, as a liaison in you know, in the in a general way of mm -hmm. their activities. So, so from that point of view, I believe that that is already going on, and that that expanding the board from three to five would not change that. But I think that the, you know, the idea of this you know this area of interest, if you were to suggest that there'd be a more clearly defined, uh, let's say. Uh, Area of activity and say, okay, that not only are you a liaison, but you're also yeah. responsible you have for a job to do. okay creating the budget. Now, I had budget creation responsibility when you know when I'd worked in uh, in private industry when I worked at the utility company, and and that was during you know, I had a lot of sympathy for Mark because in the four months that you have to you know go through the budget, you know and and, uh, and, and create it, there's a lot of energy and time that you know that goes into it, and it's not just a part-time job, it's an eight-hour job, and you have your other responsibilities to take care of at the same time. So the idea of let's say, giving separate budget creation responsibility to the commissioners has some appeal because you're going to you're going to delegate most of the scut work to the people, you know, to the department manager. Mm -hmm. But I think it would, I think it basically would allow you to come and let's say and advocate for the for the you know, for, for that part of the that budget year. because I see that when it goes over. You know, to the assembly, that they do spend some time in trying to, let's say, to advocate for a particular position. I know that when, you know, when um, Mary Lou and I were doing housing, for example, we were essentially doing that. You know, that we'd be, we try to become more informed with what the department was doing. Well, you bring back from your district what the what those need, regional needs are in your district in terms of funding, and, and then we can work together to try to sort it out. Um, the do you want to ask anybody? Yes, any opinion when, the commission? yes, I do. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to have everybody get the benefit of this discussion um, because I don't, I think 
Because what I'm concerned about are two things, communication and making this government work for, for the people and for the people who are, are, are functioning in the government. I think, and, and make it work for the people on Cape Cod. I mean, it really has to begin to work. And there are, there are roadblocks right now to making that happen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're here one day a week, and what we do outside of that is either by invitation or because we, we invited ourselves somewhere or we <laughs> asked to meet with people, but there's no real coordination of what happens outside of a Wednesday. And I think that that is really needed. So maybe uh, those of you who are here might have some comments on on the discussion or about the recommendation? Can, can I just jump in for a second? Yeah, sure. I know you don't mean to say that it doesn't work now. No. No. I think what we have works. Some, it can always work better. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And particularly mm -hmm. in the area of communication and organization. Right. Not what we're doing. That's why I'm saying what's good about today. Right. What the things get done and the regional efforts are, are moving along. But can it work? Yes, and could it, and could it Which was the whole faster. idea of, um, of the recommendation. Any comments? It, it's, I have to say, it's kind of hard to talk about a board of five uh, without recognizing that there's an assembly of delegates out there. So if you're talking about a board of five, you're actually... <coughs> I, I, I have a couple of comments. I'll, I'll start mm -hmm. doing okay. it mine. I, Going back to sort of the strengths and weaknesses of the three, um, I think sort of the prohibition on two commissioners being from the same town has been effective. Yes. Um, it sort of has spread out the, the representation um, to some extent. I think we've had concentrations on one or two boards. But in general, it sort of spreads out. So I think that's been very effective. I think also being at large, as we talked about, I have always seen commissioners, this board included, and as, as far as I can remember, all the previous boards I've worked with, really bring a broader perspective to this table, not just their town's perspective. And I think that's always been a strength for the commissioners. And sort of going to the assembly a little bit, I've been, especially during the times when we had money, I felt that the town-specific representation of the assembly was a weakness. It sort of prohibited maybe a broader perspective on getting things done more on a regional basis. But, you know, you have to sort of gauge these things a little bit. And what are you giving up? And if you, sort of our history has been, when we first did the charter, that the towns were our clients. We were it was sort of specific that the towns were our clients. And we didn't really have a citizen uh, client base at all. That's evolved a little bit more now. We certainly have more interaction directly with the citizenry, mm -hmm. both through human services, both through the health department, both uh, through uh, corporate extension and the programs that they're doing. So that's changed over time. And I think sort of thinking about how you're changing the government visions that difference so that you have a more direct contract with the citizenry. But, you know, having said that, you have to be careful about what you're giving up. And right now with the assembly, you're sort of engaged with the towns. You sort of have a direct stake in the matter to some extent. And once you give that up and go to the districts, that's sort of the danger. You sort of have to preserve the engagement with the town. And it has to be done through the executive more. That's sort of the piece that you need need to make sure you preserve it. I've done some, uh, let's say, anecdotal surveying among people that I've run into, and uh, it's been universal that they like the idea of having their town represented, their, their town represented in some way. Uh, not a district, but the town. Uh, in Harwich, uh, I like the idea that somebody from Harwich is serving at the county because I feel that the the town of Harwich uh, has some uh, visibility that they would not have if it was in a district. Uh, I think that they're, you know, that, that uh, it, these are, you know, these are basically quotes. Uh, I think that uh, uh, if you were to make it, if you were to make a change and, and Harwich was not represented, then you know what what what, what happens to Harwich? And I hear the same thing from somebody from uh, East Ham, somebody from, uh, of course, from Barnstable. 
<laughs> so, these are what I call anecdotal comments from people that I didn't I didn't cue and say, you know, you wouldn't like this idea, would you? But just a sort of a, a spontaneous response. And, and I don't think we can discount that because as we move forward and as we talk about acting for the benefit of people, uh, there are not enough people that have spoken to me spontaneously that say that they're in favor of giving up any type of a franchise. Did any of them say that what the direct benefit they thought they received because they had a specific person representing them? But or the was it just the idea of it? It was the idea of it because none of them that talked to me could give me any clear idea of what the county commissions were, what the Cape Cod Commission right. was, or what the exactly. assembly was. So no so clear the answer to that. And, and they don't even know who they're telling you is a lot of times. I mean, most well, people don't even know who they're telling you is. But you may be able to accomplish that, Bill, with other things. Like, you, they don't talk about a finance. And, and could I also ask you a question? One at a time. There, there was a marketing issue, OK? If you have to sell a concept and then sell a product or a service that fits the concept, you have a double problem here, because if we don't have enough visibility for what the county is now. We're basically selling a change in something that nobody gets to begin with. So well, and both advantages and disadvantages. And maybe they will get it if you change it. And the other, the other point is, I don't feel as though I'm not represented because I don't have my own state representative. I feel that my town is represented by very well by the state representative I have, and she rep and she is uh, representing eight other towns as well. So. To be able to say that I have to have someone directly from my town speak with for my you know with that town voice when the majority of people do not know who that person is or what they're doing, and there are some delegates that report to their uh, boards of selectmen and get on the same page with them. Often, there are many who do not. So that is kind of a, a misunderstanding of what, you know, it's just your gut reaction. I want my yeah, sort of like asking, it's, do you like mom and apple pie? Yeah, do I like mom and apple pie? Yeah, I like my, you know, what, do you like your own alternative? Home? So, yeah, so I, I, it, the, as you say, these people are speaking from, from a, a point of reference that they're not even understanding, and I feel very well represented but, in uh, but the when you, But when you think about it, it's like two organizations. You have one side of the organization that has broad representation, um, of a number of towns. Mm -hmm. And then you have another organization that has individual representation from the towns. And I think the thing is, how, what are the benefits to that? <laughs> what are the benefits to, to, the, to the citizens, I guess I want to say, is what are the real benefits to that? Yeah. I don't know. I and mean, that, you and that's we, another question. Have to stop and do, we, do we, as commissioners, we are not elected by the towns. We're elected by the population. By them. So are we here to um, to represent towns? Are, are we, are we, are, we are, are our uh, interaction based on geographies totally by, by boundaries that were created by, by man? Or do we really look at where are the regional issues that we can take care of? And we have big umbrella issues that as a strong county, we could really tackle. You could have, you know, serious uh, and, and effective uh, energy policy that is united and unified for the region, so that there isn't um, over is one one you know there isn't a lot of energy being developed in one area or not in another. You know that there is a an overall goal for the region. What what can that look like? How can we attain that goal? There is uh, the wastewater issues. How are we going to bring that voice together? How are we going to bring economic development issues and revitalization of the of the village places and the redevelopment of these so that they're much more um, friendly and yet we're protecting you know we're, we're we're concentrating density and protecting what what lands we have. So there's big issues that way, and I think that some of the question is do we represent towns? Do we represent? We are elected by all of the people, not just the towns. So. There is, uh, that is the role of county government. It's not to be the, the town-centric, it's to be the vision of the region and bringing those towns in. And I think that by having five districts, you are as well represented uh, by a person who is actively involved in all of those towns and, and, can, and it can actually see the, the, the unification of those and bring it forward into the other five. I want to say it a little differently, too. I think that 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 requirement that two commissioners cannot be elected from the same town 
obviously it's very good. But, and I think but what I see is that because th for this time around, I'm from the upper cape, you're from the lower cape, and you're sort of in the middle. Kind of yeah, close yeah to the no, middle. actually, the balance. That it's a great balance, and it uh, it just is happenstance that mm -hmm. it happened this way. But I think for the three of us, what we bring is more of an understanding of the region, your region, my region, and yours. And, and this is good because if we're making policy and we're looking at how a policy may affect all of Cape Cod, you bring that understanding because you live there and I live where I am and so do you. So this makes for a really good balance in policy setting, which is why if you look to what are the good things about having five commissioners from a district. They're going to bring that same understanding of that area of the Cape to the discussion and the debate, which you now, you you can't rely on that happening. Right, right. It's a, uh, you, all you can rely on, election. you could have three commissioners from, from Wellfleet, <laughs> Provincetown, and East Town. That's probably I mean, not likely, but not likely, have but more it can Jonathan, uh, yeah. uh, Talent, uh, that and would be yeah, better. Yeah, or yeah, Barnstable, yeah, Barnstable, yeah, yeah, and, and that's not going to really help either end of, of the cake no, because so, they're really sort of so it there. doesn't really allow for that for that and that's where regional. That's where the and I think we did have. I'm trying to remember. Born sandwich. Born sandwich in the back. Well, that's why the other cake number no, was a county Thomas government. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thomas yeah, Thomas and Thomas. But we had John Stone at one point. Yeah, yeah, no, from yeah, Chatham. Yeah, but he's still Ben Chatham, so we're going there. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> had, uh, we don't want to go there. But that's, a down, that's really uh, yeah. a downside right. to, the, to the current situation. Absolutely. And, and it's happened before. Right. We were just right. saying that. Born. Yeah. Thomas and um, I think it was Born Sandwich and Mashby. And Mashby, yeah, yeah, something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but as we go into this, remember that we, when we put together a budget, and the budget gets passed, regardless of where the origin of the of the past county commissioners have been, it has always ended up with the check and balance that we have in getting mm -hmm. and having a regional focus. Uh, and I think that. Uh, you know, one of the things we're going to be doing this afternoon, for example, is we're going to go over and we're going to talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, was it, uh, to get some support from committee uh, to to support the, you know, our idea of a region, you know, a regional program uh, that uh, you know that we think would be very helpful in sort of pushing that whole regional services. And I want to say that in addition to the regional services that we're doing to coordinate, to have somebody, as we've talked about today, have somebody that every day comes in and says, this is what I'm going to be thinking about today. These are the things that I'm, you know, I'm, going, to, I'm going to, you know, to go forward with. The idea of having part-time commissioners uh, you know, are selected. they're still part-time. Yeah, this, mm -hmm. you know, the, I remember when they were full-time professional mm -hmm. selectmen. And they would wait for one of the people to go out of the room, and they would basically sort of gang up on them, and right. they would do things. So that wasn't really no. an effective way of, of running things. Uh, the professional manager operating to implement the policy that was created by, you know, let's say, by the budget, because the budget is the policy statement. You've decided to spend your money to do certain things, and that creates a policy. And I think that we're, you know, we are doing that now. Uh, I do think, though, that the two things, the three of us do not have what I would call full-time employment. Okay. I'm retired, basically, so I have the time to put in to be a county commissioner. Although you're a selectman in Talman, and God knows you're, you're going to see the third night tonight, you know, work with that. Good luck okay. with that. Uh, and, and as far as I know, you're, you know, you're not fully employed. How would somebody do the things you're talking about for the money that they're talking about if they're if you know if you're intending to have them say in say uh, be of an age where they may have uh, you know they may have responsibility for children unless they're enormously wealthy uh, or you know or independent in that way how would how would we attract people that we want to to be representative of the community that we serve. And yet, we are expecting that uh, they somehow will be able to support themselves and, you know, and still do the job. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, you know, um, the county commissioners were, have been viewed uh, for a long time as, and, and although they have stood for many good things and, and gotten things through, sort of ceremonial figures. We're sort of like that ceremonial mayor of a town, you know, like uh, the mayor of Cambridge. But there is, and that, that person was elected, but never really the visionary. 
to have somebody a visionary, you have to have them be able to be in place without fear of having to face a re-election and have a 10-year vision down the road. And how am I going to get there? I mean, some of the best managers we have on the Cape have been in their seats for 25 plus years. And they have been able to keep those towns going forward with a vision in the change of the times and adapted the town and have also guided the selectmen in what those are, having enough knowledge to be able to say, this is something I think we could do, we should do. Those selectmen bring that back and then it goes forward. So I think that that is a much more efficient way of doing things as opposed to being more of a hindrance to a person who has a, is a because you don't have all of the executive power, you have many other different uh, responsibilities, and then when it's time to even propose something, not only do you have three commissions to get it through, but then there's 15 town representation who then refer it back. So it is hard to go forward with a 10-year vision plan the way it's set up because it's very immediate, I think. Well, if, if you take any public policy course, one of the big problems is that the crisis, uh, the crisis of having short-term uh, budget uh, means that uh, you have to always think immediately about the amount of money you have to operate this year. You don't, you, you don't have the authority to, let's say, to invest in a in a long-term program. You don't have the authority to, let's say, to invest in a program. Even even on gr on long on long-term grants, for example, you have to go back every year in order to, let's say, in order to get support for, you know, for a grant that's more than a couple of years. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's if that grant works. And if the grant does, you know, if there, I mean, that's a whole other thing. But you, you, um... Nothing will change with regard to short cycle budget mentality. I, I agree okay, with so, that. But so you still that. have to have even a person, you know, you can have, and some of our department heads are doing it. We're looking three years down the road, I'm going to need a truck, so I'm pacing this out. You know, there is a way of doing that even within a budget cycle because you are planning ahead. Ten years from now, we want to be here. So how am I setting up this budget, our debt service, our bonding service? How are we setting up all of these things so that we can ultimately come to that, well, that's the capital that goal? Plan. So that's, the, that's a capital plan. plan or a strategic plan. So uh, I think that that is deterred within the structure because of this. Uh, let's, can we go back to the two at large okay. and try to have some discussion on where we think we should go with that? Well, I, I just would need more information. I really, I, I, I don't even know what to say. But I mean, I think I, I like to have the regional voice want to run at large. Well, that's what I mean. How would that campaign go for them? What would be the support for them? And um, uh, well, the other issue that at, goes to partisan piece too. We're just looking at sort of go back to what forms a majority. So, to me, the five and two, four and three, you get a broad representation of Cape Cod. A majority vote of the commissioners. Right. If you have that. That's right. I, so I think one of those two is a good. Yeah, no, remember that five are being proposed. Well, it's being proposed as nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. So not a Republican, Democrat. I don't know how that works out. I think it's it works out terrible the because, what? because right now you're, the Democrat and Republican Party form a base of support that you can go That's to. We'll put out signs for you, and we'll and and. Are you nonpartisan on your? No, no, no. You guys are. Yeah, no, you are. Yeah. We, we are not. Okay, but who would, if you're running across the region or even running in a district, you have to basically form all of the infrastructure that a party gives you in order to, you know, in order to run. And if you don't have that infrastructure, you have to do double work in order to create that. And you, only, it only has the life of the, say, of your campaign. Unless you spend a lot of time outside of your job maintaining and holding that organization together. On the flip side, um, being nonpartisan, and you are going to be looking for those people who are the worker bees <coughs> of their party, and that's that's why you have a party so you can have that support. You can go to both. You can be invited to Republican meetings, and you can be because you are now going to be speaking for a voice of Cape Cod and not just a party or an ideology. So you would have the benefit of of being able to be exposed. You know, right now, you know, during a primary season, I I doubt that you were ever really invited to Democratic town committee meetings, nor have we ever been invited to Republican town committee meetings. This way, you have the benefit of being invited to both. Many of the town uh, Democratic 
meetings will invite the boards of selectmen and those candidates, whether they're Republican or Democrat, and everybody sort of knows where people fall, where their, uh, you know, their leanings are. So I think that there's almost a benefit to that, and it could also uh, be a benefit in uh, discussion and dialogue as opposed to being more divisive. Although, Sheila, the, isn't the danger, since you're nonpartisan, there'd be no primary, so you have more on the final ballot, so you have more of a tendency to be elected with a non-majority? Is that how it would work? Well, we'd have to work. discuss it with the. Uh, so if you had ten people, you'd have to have a, we'd have to have a lawyer here to help. Yeah, well, exactly. because on the state ballot, well, it's partisan in the primary, but on, on the general election in November, you're voting for uh, Republicans and Democrats. You could have changed that to be part of the mm -hmm. town election cycle, yeah, you which is could. a nonpartisan election. Yeah, you, you can have it a different that. election right. cycle. Oh, different okay. it could be on the town election cycle, maybe. Oh. I don't know. But, but we'd have to explore that. But I think if you're going to be, if you're really going to represent all the people on Cape Well. Well, I want to talk about the, you know, about the you know how, how do, how the do two, people the get two represented? At large. Uh, how do they, get, how do they uh, win at in the In past election cycles, I've actually set up a, a cable program and invited both parties to come on. And, and they, have, they have come on. And uh, I, I felt that, that uh, all of us that, you know, that are serving you know, have some need of Providing an opening to people to get, you know, to get the message out. Now, perhaps that could be expanded, in, you know, in, into a different way when we're talking about, you know, the county commissioners. Because I don't believe I, in the boards that I've sat on as a county commissioner, um, that there's ever been what I would call a partisan bias, uh, you know, at this level, uh, and, um, and 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 the representation we've had on Cape Cod. I've, I've never felt that people put party before, you know, before people. So that to me is a non-issue right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a. I mean that's change. That's that's a. I mean we're fortunate in the in the fact that so far that it has not really impacted us. I would I guess you would say, but it has changed. I mean there are some people who would not want to talk to you because yeah, if you say like you're a Republican, won't, you know, won't but if you are if you're a non-partisan person, you may be able to not only learn mm. from people you think you're going to disagree with, but they're going to learn from you. That you're not just, uh, they're not dismissing you because they'll say that person's a Republican and that person's a Democrat. So I'm just shutting off. Yeah, you're right. Because, it has changed. So there, it has changed. Yeah, Unfortunately, partisan, you know, people used to be much more uh, easygoing with this and, and do vote for the person mm -hmm. in the end. Um, the one thing that I will say is, uh, you know, once we got through the primary, I was talking to a, a Republican elected official and he said, just remember, once you get elected, you uh, are now representing all of Cape Cod, not just, and I, I didn't need to hear that, but I appreciated that coming from a, a Republican elected official. So, um, you know, I, I think that there's a benefit to it. It could actually be a very unifying uh, board if it was a nonpartisan board. That's just my own feeling. And somehow we've got to start being able to talk across these lines, and it might be just the right, the right setup to do so it. So let's go back to the two at large. I I'm not sure what to you're, say. You're not in favor of two at large. Um, or you have if, to if we st if we stay at, at, you know just as uh, as an executive branch, okay. And you're talking about five, you know, let's say five districts and five district representatives and uh, two uh, at large. Uh, I see pros and cons, you know, with you know, with with that setup. I do know that. Do not have to be reminded to think regionally because I did run at large across all 15 towns, mm -hmm. and then I know that, uh, uh, that although I might be in favor of a particular, let's say, what happened in a particular area, you know, because of you know, because I live there, uh, I also know that I can't really take that, you know, that it's like that geographic bias and say that I'm truly doing the job that I was elected to do if I don't take into account. What happens in Bourne or what happens in Provincetown? So, so, to, so the the at large, you know, has that you know has that benefit because although you may not satisfy everybody in all 15 towns, you do have to keep in mind that you're representing everybody in all 15 towns. Right. Okay. And if I could just say that you know this is sort of a um, our own feelings about things, not based on um, real concrete examples or law or that sort of thing, and. I was talking to a, a good friend of mine who's a constitutional lawyer, um, but it's you know the U.S. Constitution, 
And they have put me in touch with a, um, a professor who heads the Department of Law at Harvard who uh, teaches on municipal and county governments. So I'm going to get in touch with this gentleman and see if, uh, you know, what is his feelings on this? Could he direct us to, um, to people that could help us or um, students? Or maybe he would have some comments to make on the subject. But I just think just to go to some... Uh, of what what is what is the experience? What is okay. the, the a lot of this was covered in those case studies that I gave. Yes, I understand that. I understand that. But I mean, I'm just talking about somebody from Massachusetts with an understanding of Massachusetts law, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and municipalities and county and gov county governments. I mean, I'm just saying to have much more have more of a guidance on that area. So I would rather. I mean, I like I like the concept. I mean, I can understand the concepts of both. I'm not. I'm not equipped to say, do I prefer one above the other at this moment? No, the, yeah. to piggyback on that idea, we have always had representation at the, you know, at the uh, Commonwealth, and there have always been committees uh, that with staff that, you know, that looked at county governance issues mm -hmm. in Massachusetts. I wonder if we would be served if we found out who those people were to find out what, you know, what they had looked at, because remember, there's been several counties that have been dissolved, right. and, uh, and we were, you know, we have been able to survive because we made a case that we were actually making a significant contribution to the region. And we're a unique region. I mean, we're different than uh, than a bunch of towns that happen to be, you know, right in the middle of Massachusetts. I mean, we have we have a we have a coastline that surrounds us that makes us a common boundary. We have common issues because of that coastline that that separate us. We're we're detached from the mainland. So there is many good reasons for us to have We have more than just a jail to keep it going. I'm, yeah, I'm interested in other thoughts about the, the two at large. Does anyone here listening to us today have any? Jerry? I just have a question. Sure. Because I thought that the recommendation talked about a new body that was a merger of the right. Commissioner's Board and yes. the Assembly, and it would have not so much executive, but legislative power. Right. Right. And I began to wonder about where we fit in passing ordinances and holding in. I, I think that deserves some role here. I, well, I that's why you have it. to talk I about the assembly. assembly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think, I, well, I just, if you don't have any comments on, on the two at large commissioners, then let's move to the assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, the discussion with the assembly, the idea that these seven commissioners, uh, five, yeah, I'm thinking, of, I'm talking about the recommendation now, Five by district, two at large, merging with the with the county commissioners, losing some of its executive powers, uh, transferring some of those to the uh, county manager or county executive, and then um, bringing in the legislative, the current legislative powers that the assembly has, and creating that court. one body. Right. So and let's I think talk that about we, that. I think we've sort of said that we agree that that's a good move. I'd like to hear at this point what I mean. Well, let's talk about what's good about it first. Well, I think we just we discussed about what is what is good about the assembly. What is good about merging the legislative functions? I think the things that we just discussed right now were the benefits of merging. And what we were you know we were talking about county commissioners, but no. Well, we did sort of. We alluded to the regional. You can't avoid it. when you're talking about the. Board right, because you're talking about board. collapsing two yeah. boards. Well, I was focusing more on the maintaining separation as an executive branch and just expanding the membership on the executive branch. That's right. what I was speaking to. Oh, you were not talking about... Because you specifically about said you did not want to bring up the assembly. In the first discussion, I wanted right. to talk about what's good about what we have now with the commissioners. Right, and that's what, and I, I thought that that's what I was speaking about. Yeah, right. I, I so now that. we want to talk about. Okay, so Bill can talk about, about the maybe I'm the right. proposal that includes the legislative functions. Okay. This is the new group being recommended. The new group of commissioners, five and seven, with less executive functions because some of those are being moved to the county executive, so that a lot of what we do, we don't do and merging the legislative functions of the assembly with the commission. I would like to just make the an observation. The benefits of that. You're giving your executive power to a, 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 some a, of, a county some of manager. No. no, you would be giving all of your executive, pretty much the day-to-day, -day, other than oh, legislative day -day. policy. So really, what we're talking about by a five-member and seven-member board 
is eliminating the board of commissioners and reducing the size of the assembly of delegates and making it more representative. So um, I, I think that's, you know, everybody's saying that it's really a change to the assembly, but they're the legislative branch. It's really the change is reducing that and eliminating the board of commissioners. I don't think we would be called a board of commissioners, or maybe we would be, but it wouldn't be the same. It's not an executive body any longer. Right. You wouldn't so, have appointing. So there's power, yeah, there's none of it. Right? You would have budgetary approval power. But, yeah, budgetary the, and policy. Executive and policy. would develop the right. budget and submit it to you, right. just right. like submitted right. there to the assembly. Right. Mm -hmm. And policy. Right. And I think I I think it's um, I'm in favor of that. So what do you think? Okay. So yeah, I think I think that it's it's you have to understand that you're you're eliminating the executive board and and reducing. The, ex the legislative board in giving them more of a, uh, a footprint. You're expanding their, their responsibility, which is good for them because they're not just looking at their town, they're looking at their town with the towns that surround their town and where is, that, that, uh, where is the policy that's going to benefit that area right. as and, opposed and, to and, town by town. And policy making has some executive uh, substance Implications. to it as well, yes. Yeah. Right. So, but, it's, but it's really when it comes to the day-to-day -day operations, those executive functions, right, and the well, policy-making I mean, functions, you're really, you're really putting in executive power into a manager. Right. I mean, that's what you have at the town It really becomes sort of a town well, model. And, and it's, a, it's exactly a town model. It is a town model. It's a, it's a professional model, model, and it's an efficient model. Yeah, it's and it's so a model I, I that it already right. has determined to work. Okay, I'd rather... Um, I'd rather really hear from other people. Well, because we have already agreed that we like the recommendation right. in terms of the merger right. and the creation and bringing in the legislature. Right. I think it, I think it would make county government run more. But Bill doesn't agree with this. With regard to coal, it's a, uh, the idea of expanding the board of commissioners is something that I think is a useful idea to look at, and and I and I think it's worth a conversation to discuss what the you know what the the job description of a regional versus a, uh, let's say, a district commission would be in terms of an executive role. However, in spite of what might be implied to be the high emotional content with regard to individuals who say that they like the idea of having a person that is representing the town on the region, at a regional level, I don't think we can, you know, we can completely ignore that. And and I and I betcha that if we did do a, what I'd call a regional survey about what people thought about what represented democratic representation versus what did not, I would suggest to you that people would be, we would have to do a lot more than we've done so far to sell the idea that they're getting more representation rather than less. And that the, the other part is that what, you know, we, have, we haven't figured out what basis we're going to sell this model on. So that, we're just talking about what model we don't know we, what the model is. We don't have a yeah. model yet. We have a recommendation, and we're trying to work with the recommendation that we have and looking at what we have now and is this going to make it better. So, can we accept this new model? And if we do, what are the benefits of it? And then we have to build a whole, um, we have to define it. And we have to be very specific okay. about okay. it before we even if take I can, it anywhere. If I can we just haven't even completely defined what the, this the model legislative is. body of Massachusetts was much larger at one point, and it has been reduced to 168. There was 204 representatives. Now it's 168. It, it, I, I think that everybody in Massachusetts is probably is well represented. So I think that by saying it has to be by a town or even more voices up there. Is not is is somewhat mute. Um, also, um, it, it was brought to my attention, and I this is another reason I want to talk to some people about this. In 1964, there was um, whether it was an amendment or a decision made about the Constitution that you did not elect uh, people were not to be elected by their geography. You are elected by a population, which is what created the Senate and the the populations of the Senate and the House. And the Senate is different. I understand that, but it is basically on populations, um, not on uh, geographies. How? So I haven't flushed all this out, but these these are things to look into. 
for saying that I am less represented by having a uh, a district represented representative. I, for instance, have, um, and I, I just wanted to add this up. In Wellfleet, the delegate has 1.27 percent of a vote, but. If you added up the votes of Provincetown, Orleans, East Ham, Truro, Wellfleet, and Brewster, it would come to 13.14%. So that is still less than what a representative's vote would be for that district. Or if you add, you could even add another town's district because if you put five into 100%, you get 22 point some, 22.2% whatever percent, and um, you would actually have more uh, representation from a district representative than you do by an individual delegate. Yeah, basically, because it's one out of five, you're 20 percent. That's exactly right. <laughs> So I see what Sheila's getting at. Oh, so you're, you're, well, so you have every district that's but. equal representation. No, I mean, but it, that would be a much more fair an equitable representation yeah. as opposed to how it stands now. Just because I don't live in Barnstable, I pay the same taxes, you know, where towns are assessed, uh, you know, the same percentage goes in, but I don't have as much of a vote because I don't have the population. I, I don't think that it's, okay. it makes any sense. Uh, going back, we both served in the Assembly. Mm -hmm. In my service in the Assembly, most of the work that was done was done in the committee. I was chair of, a, of Economic Affairs. Uh, and there were, there were several, and most, in, in, in the time that I was on there, the lower cape had more representation in the chairs of the committees than the upper cape did. So that the, the, although the population was weighted towards the, uh, you know, the, towards the larger towns, the effective uh, the work of the assembly was done in those committees, and it seemed to me that, you know, that, that, that worked fairly well because of the, let's say, because of what happened in the committee. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the state example you've given before, uh, in the Fourth Barnstable, which we both live in, uh, she spends an awful lot of time in Harwich to find out what those issues are, so that you know, so that she can, you know, so that in my opinion, she can clearly serve the, you know, the, the whole district and the whole population. That's, and that's that's what you were to do as a So I feel right. very well but, represented by having the same, a representative. But at the same time, she will tell you that it took a long time to. To have people in Harwich look at her as being a representative in the Fourth Barnstable, as opposed to as opposed to being somebody from Provincetown, so that that is that does require someone who is able to put full time into the job of representing, and which brings up a, an additional problem, in my opinion, that if you were to put a, a person in a district that already has a state rep. Do we do this through the charter, or do we get legislative action? Because if we have to get legislative action, why would I, as a politician, want to have somebody that could be an understudy or basically run against me because they could pose that I am an incumbent and what I'm doing, and I, and I can run against your incumbency? How I would think, you answer that? I think that that, is, uh, that would be, a, if that is the representative's feeling, then it comes from total self-interest because why not have people who are more engaged in government, who have that exercise of government, and if, if, if you don't have, say, and not everybody stays to be a state representative, they run for other things, they run for higher office. So why not have people who are, uh, have experience in government, have experience with campaigning, have experience with the area that they are representing, to be able to be to be able to stand up and go forward into that, that seat. I, I think that, that is a when very weak Harvard, argument not to do district. When you talk to this Harvard Law district. Professor, ask him how much of that naivete is really shared by most politicians. <laughs> uh, and, well, that's the politicians, but that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. You create a farm team. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that having more people engaged in, in, a, in a, a real concrete level and you really have a learning experience is only good for democracy. Well, but in some ways, Bill, the argument is really you pose more of a threat to a legislator in that sense because you have a much broader exposure. 
So in some ways, that's being diluted in the sense that it's only a district person now, it's only from five towns or whatever. Or I, I think that this is a philosophical level. Yes, it is. But, but, there I, are but some, I still think it exists. There are some sort of detail-oriented questions in here, because you have to sort of be careful about, is it a new district? Well, if it's a new district, it's going to pose challenges for the town, because it's the towns who conduct the elections. Not the county. We don't have an elected. We don't have an election department. So you have to model it sort of so that you take into consideration town wards. Otherwise, you're going to create your own sort of election issues. Well, okay. that brings up well, the that's, question that's I raised before. Is this, a, is this a charter issue? Can this it definitely is a legislative issue. Right. This right. definitely needs legislation oh, yeah, because right. you're you're creating. They're not special purpose districts, but a new county commissioner district mm -hmm. that would be. Okay. For an elected purpose. The, the last time we had a, a, a countywide referendum to get a charter change, it passed in the county by 75 percent, and then it sat on somebody's shelf. And I, I believe we have to we have to go through the process of reintroducing it. Probably, if we have these changes, I, I have no evidence based upon experience that the legislative branch is supportive of any changes that we want to make unless we all. In agreement, unless we well, have some evidence, we have It would be very order. unwise on our part if we proposed anything in terms of uh, legislative effort that we already knew did not have support of the legislative delegation from the right. cause. I mean, we'd be whistling in the wind. Right. Because so, if they didn't support what we were doing, what's the point in doing that? You know, so that we have to we have to engage them in this process. And we talked about it at the last uh, Cape Island Island Selectment meeting when well, Sarah Peak was there, and I think one other legislator, mm -hmm. and and it was very true. I mean, if they're not going to support it, it won't go anywhere. Then so it has we to have this conversation with them, then, as far as as far as what the other leaders on Cape Cod have to say with regard to the things we're proposing. I think you sort of have to. I think that's a good idea. Yes, I think. Oh, well, that, we yeah, eventually, you want to say, eventually, you know, what do you think? We have to get our so, own I mean, thoughts together first and yeah. get a little more detail mm. into what we really uh, want to consider before we. I think before we. Yeah, move. I think there is a give certain them point concrete. we have to do something, something, something in writing, something concrete that this is what we're looking at, and we would want their support in that. The the overall issue for me is. Mm -hmm. uh, in what we're talking about creating, there is a system of checks and balances that exist under the present system. Mm -hmm. uh, the specific reason for the assembly being created was to create a check on the, specifically, I think, on the Cape Cod Commission, as well as looking at the budget issues with regard to what the you know, what the county was spending. And indeed, they you know they carry that out through you know, both through the audit and through the and through the budget process which we're going on now. Right. So the question becomes. Is what we're proposing, or what we're talking about now, is that going to is that going to create a stronger or a weaker sense of representation? I'm talking about sense, not you know, not you know, not in substance. And how do we how do we we may believe that would happen, but uh, I, I just have some you know, some serious reservation about whether by replacing what we have that. Are we going to create something better or something that that might be looked at as, let's say, supporting the needs of the development community? In other words, it's easier for things to get done in Cape Cod because this serves the needs, this serves the interests of the business community without looking at what the constituents believe is in their best interest. I wouldn't characterize I it that, that way, Bill, yeah. but I, there is a risk. I agree. I sort of agree with Bill. That, so, and that's sort of sure. what I was saying before about the strengths and weaknesses about the Assembly of Delegates is the strength and the weakness is, in my mind, pretty equivalent, and that's the linkage to the towns. You have sort of a drink, direct linkage to the towns, the towns are engaged with what you do. But does that, in my mind, prohibit you from doing things sometimes on a more regional basis? Yeah, I think it does. Sometimes there's a, a, pro, a parochial focus on the town borders, and that's the way it is. You hear it, you, you just said that. And that's sort of the beauty of this new system is you sort of take that away. Now you have districts, so you have some regional approaches even within the Cape. But do you lose engagement with the community when you do that? That's a risk, yes. But that's that's up to sort of the strength, and you have to have confidence that the district person or the district electorate will elect 
a good person who won't let that engagement dissipate. And that's what you have to have confidence in. If you're going this route, and you want to go this route. You know, uh, there's there's people here who have served on the assembly for a number of years and um, people might have something I just like I'd love to hear from you. Anybody want with the assembly on this? we have two assembly members current we have a former assembly member here I would love to yeah, Lou, I can't yeah, believe you don't have anything to say Mary, Come on. I can't believe that. <laughs> well I just want to just say at the very beginning that uh, the idea and the purpose of the special commission was not because we thought we had a bad county or that it was disorganized or that it wasn't providing good services. Uh, it was, uh, <coughs> we have a county that's always the audit, great bond ratings, I think we have great employees, I think we have great departments, we provide excellent services. We were one of the few counties left in the Commonwealth and people came out when it was threatened to save this county in great numbers. I was one of them. So I don't think w this was done from a um, point of view that we have a bad county. Uh, I regret that some of the responses I've heard to our to commission rec recommendations so show such a lack of vision. Uh, they're an immediate no. And right. Or, well, they just made up problems so they could come up with a solution. It doesn't show any thinking at all. It just shows gut reaction to change, which I am disappointed in, but not I didn't. It's not unexpected. So that was the number one thing. The thing I think you're sort of overlooking a bit is we did this because of the challenges of the future. And the challenges of the future are not just, uh, they're facing the country, and it's the need for more collaboration the need for more coordination, the need, the technology needs that we can just begin to see are affecting everybody. They're going to be so great that we can't even envision what they might be. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it already. It's beyond me already. Well, it was a long time ago, but it's, it's, so, it's so making a change in the landscape. And it, that means a change in government we wouldn't be having this discussion, which I think is essential at this time in our history. If there hadn't been a push, wouldn't have happened at the assembly. They have two hours and they don't get deep into discussion on any one issue. So that wouldn't have happened there. It wasn't happening. So we had a special commission form of great diversity, really. You had environmentalists, you had business people, you had government people, uh, you had uh, non-profit organizations, I think, and you had different political points of view. I think it was amazing that that group came together the way it did. Now, I I think you should question very much the recommendations, but please, I hope everybody does it, not just with a decision in their mind already, I'm not going to buy it, I'm not going to buy that, but with an open mind. That may be too much to hope for from some people, but uh, the recommendations that were made were for a strong executive, not a manager, an executive who would be more than just a spokesperson for this county, but would be that. We don't have that now. When we want to hear something from the county, what does the county think about this? Which one of you do we go to? Who do you go to from the assembly? I chaired and, well, I established a lower Cape community coalition when I first came to the Cape eight towns, they were upset because they said the Upper Cape didn't do anything for the Lower Cape. So we got eight towns together. They were a much stronger voice as eight towns than they had been as each town in the Lower Cape. Now that's going to be a hard sell. I've heard it already. We can't give up our rights. Well, you have so 2% of the vote that has to go over a couple of the bigger towns and all that. You really have to be very, very united. And on many regional issues, they, the assembly is not. We haven't passed some regional issues because of a parochial point of view. But I think you can sell, but you're going to have to do that, and that's what concerned me. What is your plan to get the community involved in hearing this, in giving you feedback? 
That's as important as the plan, if not more important than the plan itself. I think you could have more power, more of a voice, if the lower Cape Towns came together and the upper and, and really stressed. We there are unique and distinct and good differences among the towns, but there are also, more importantly, a sense of unity around them all. And if we're going to face the challenges of the future, we can't do it with the government that we've got right now. I, I, and that's not a negative against any of you. It's yeah. reality. No, I absolutely well, I, agree with you. Know, you just said. I, I think what's really important about what you said, too, is when you look at the way the government is, this government is, is formed now, which are the three commissioners who represent the whole Cape, and then you have the assembly of delegates where they each represent a town. That already uh, creates a certain conflict. And I don't mean the people, conflict between a commissioner or the commissioners and the members. It's the conflict in the organization that it creates. Because you have one group, you have one group that's representing all of the Cape, and another group that's representing each of the towns on the Cape. And if the goals are uh, regional services and regional planning, that conflict in the organizational structure doesn't allow for that to work very well. It will work, but it doesn't work very well because people are operating from a totally different set of principles. But you have to do it and not lose the town identity. Yes, the no, there's and there's that's a very handy really, 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 Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, 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 wait a second, Mary Lou hasn't finished speaking. Well, the other thing you've overlooked and you haven't mentioned is that the uh, commission recommended an intermunicipal association which also is going to be representing each town. In other words, the thought would be that that could be your town administrator. So we've got 15, every town now has a town administrator that I'm aware of. They are very professional people. We had three of them on a special commission. Mm -hmm. Their service was invaluable. It I was. mean, they were just uh, superb in giving advice and supportive. If we brought that group together, and it's recommended in the four, four times a year for feedback from each town through their professional administrator, let's utilize that great professionalism that's out there and have them also represent each of the towns and bringing back issues, concerns, and problems. So I think we're trying to protect that identity, but I think personally, that this plan can be sold as giving each town a better voice than it has now. Okay. We're going to stop for a second. Okay. 30 seconds, I'll be right back. Would you just state what you had just said before we go to responses? The last statement you made? Oh, she, she about the stating, assembly. We no, she was stating that the also regional, in, the, yeah, in, the regional, in the regional plan, it was also suggested that there be some town representation. It's called an intermunicipal. In, intermunicipal, intermunicipal yeah. or a council of government. Municipal government, county, 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 council 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 advisory board. Right. Which what they thought could be composed of each of the town administrators. And town managers, right, because they are the ones that understand their budgets, they have a, they have much more of a vision going forward and see where they can, and they also have to see where they can survive under a proposition two and a half. A lot of these issues that are coming down, no town is going to be able to maintain no, well, those services. Yes. I did not say tight money. That's yes, it, it by themselves. So there has to be another way, another another entity that can garner those resources and and help them with that, so that they can do the functions of the town. 
Does that mean that we're, you're, that we're going to have, was it fundraising capacity or taxing ability beyond what we have now? You're not suggesting that, are you? That was never part of what no, I mean, but when, no, that's what I'm saying. saying. This is, this, but our services right now, now 15 towns, 14 towns signed up for the e-permit, you know, for the e-permitting grant, for the, the community 14. collaboration. So you, ha they see that this <laughs> is going to save them money. And this is going, and they wanted it. They voted for it. Every board, every selectman board voted for it. But the, that came with a lot of interaction with their town manager, with them saying, this would be a benefit to us because this would give us this much cost savings so that we could now take care of maintain our beaches, do our whatever we have to do over here. So it's it's not a taxing, it's saving. By, by being able to collaborate and garner more resources, you're bringing in more money to the town. I mean, we brought a lot of money into the Cape Cod region in the last four years, three and a half years, through Open Cape and the different, I mean, Beth has a, a I mean, tons of money has come in here because we're, we're putting forward grants that speak to a region, not just for a specific okay. I idea. wanted to make that clarification because I, there has been a misunderstanding that as we go forward with projects, that we're, it, it is a, a, a facade to, uh, to protect our interest in creating our ability to raise money. So I wanted to raise we money have by taxes. Not even there I, yet. I do we're have a question to ask. Wait, wait a second. From, from I just, Rose. before you leave that, we have never, ever suggested that. Well, I think um, that has to be emphasized it, over and over again so okay, that people well, don't get a misunderstanding about it. That, that, that's the only point I'm trying to make. Okay. I think we understand that, but I want to make sure that the public doesn't doesn't get the impression that we are supporting a move towards increasing our ability to reach into the public purse. Uh, yeah, the, are, the question I have with regard to the recommendations you know, that the Special Commission has made is that there was a recommendation that they made that I'm very much in favor of. It was number two with regard to the wastewater management plan. Okay. Okay. And, we want to stay with the assembly. No, but, oh, but, this, but this has something to do with the efficiency of it, would we, would we have a better chance of getting the wastewater pro wastewater program through if we had this new organization over what we have now? And because to me, that's a key issue of if we're talking about changing the effectiveness of government and looking to the future. To me, the most important thing that we can do for our future in my opinion, is to look at the wastewater management issue and move it forward and bring it to completion. So the question I have, and this is sort of in the back of my, in, in the back of my mind, is what we're proposing a net adder, or do we have to? And I know that you refer to it as a parallel path, but my concern is that how much energy do we have in pursuing both of these things to bring it to fruition? And how much, how much does one support the other, and how much does it detract from the other? That, and, and that, I think, is a legitimate concern that I have, and I think that that's shared by other people. I, I, would, I would address that by saying definitely, I mean, and this came up in the special commission. They asked Paul and Andy, and, they, and there was a big discussion about it. As, as we stand now in the current structure, would we be able to handle this issue, or do we look like we're capable of handling this issue? And as it turns out, we're working on it 15 towns, you know, one at a time. Now, that's the structure given by the EPA, and that's the structure that we're given with. But with a stronger regional voice, you would be able, they, they felt that you just, with the current structure, we are not going to move forward. With a Cape Cod voice, since it's a Cape Cod problem, you can present that as 15 unified towns going forward with a plan and saying this is what we feel we can do, it, it respects our region environmentally, it solves the problem, and it will save money. With that type of unification, you will be able to go to the federal government. Dan, at a press conference yesterday, Senator Wolf spoke to this. I have a lot more leverage going up saying, I need money for these 15 towns to, before Congress or before the state uh, legislature, then he's saying, well, I just need this money for Bonstable, or I just need this money for Truro. It's not going to happen. So this makes it a stronger unified voice. And, um, and I, I think that as we stand now, we, we, 
it, it's too, it, it reverts back too much. Okay. Too can much. I, can, can I just Mark. add something yeah. though? Although I sort of caution about this becoming a single issue right. thing. It's, it's not. It's, it's not, not about wastewater, it's not about energy, right. it's right. not about, it's about how the county is going to govern itself going forward in the future. And I think that's a sort of bigger question. And I think Mary Lou sort of put it very uh, succinctly. It's sort of, can we handle the challenges going forward? Wastewater is just one of them. Right. Very smart. I just want to, you asked a specific question. Yes. And this tension between... Oh, maybe you could identify yourself, oh, no. too, oh, sure. for the people at home since <laughs> they Martin. can't even see you. <laughs> Teresa Martin, um, Assembly Delegate from East Ham. The tension that Sheila alluded to between local, a, a voice specific to a geography, and a one-person percentage tension has been part of our political culture from the very founding of the country. And it happens everywhere from a very local level to a, the federal level. It's the same tension reflected over and over again. So no one should be surprised we're having this discussion here. And in fact, you know, our, our, at our federal level, our by Carmel form of Congress came out of a compromise that was brokered, weirdly enough, by my great 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 ancestor Roger Sherman, actually. And the, the, the decision of how to balance it there was, of course, that the Senate would give equal weight to every geography and the House would provide representation based on population percentages. Now, coming to a real micro local level, the Assembly to me seems to have come to that balance by saying, we'll kind of try to put both solutions in one body and we'll have this a representation from every town and we'll use the weighted vote as the way to answer the tension between the population. And it's a hard thing to get your mind around when you think about it, but it's not a bad solution. It takes the tension and tries to solve it in one body. And before you just say, oh, it doesn't work, I think it's worth a lot more conversation to see the ways that it, it does work and if the thing that isn't working, what is the thing that isn't working? To define that a little more cleanly, because right now, I don't think we've teased apart enough what that thing is. We're just picking something that seems like an easy thing to point to. It's, a, it's too big a group of people. Well, is it too big a group of people? Or is it a, a larger dynamic? And the other thing, please let me finish, Sheila. The other thing I'd like to add is that... Um, we kind of have two different discussions going on here as well. There's the needs of individual voters. And right now the way we're structured in this county is individual voters vote for the executive and they vote for the legislative body. The towns do not vote for that. The town voice comes from guaranteeing that people who live in this geography have a voice. The town is not a member. Another way to structure a regional government is the way Franklin County has done. They use a council of governments approach. The members are the towns, not the individual voters. They're two very different things. And in having this discussion, you can't take kind of one from here and one from here and kind of glom them together and get something. So when you start to talk about the towns having a voice, does that say that the underlying desire is really to have this complete and total shift of a form of government and have it be a representative council of governments that perform things of regional value to the towns? Or do we really want to continue to have a government that's represented by individual voters. They're two different things. But I hear a lot of the conversation kind of mixing stuff up in one, one piece. And the last thing I want to say is this is why I feel so strongly that I like having a government elected by individual voters. And I think that whatever form the executive branch takes should continue to be elected by the voters. Once you create this appointed executive, you have already moved away from the intent of representative government. Would you like to speak now, Sheila? No, I mean I was listening to everything you said. I had, not, you know, I just wanted to hear how you felt about that. The only thing I want to say is that the Council of Governments in Franklin County is really just an administrative agreement between those county governments. They don't have SWAT as a, as in the same way that Barnstable County does. It's a totally different model. It's really it sharing is, administrative it is services. different models. But some of what we speak about in terms of coming to regionally delivered solutions are services to the towns. Right. And if that is what how we are defining what regional services are, is that a discussion that ought to be happening and not just jumping on this other path? Well, I think the, um, um, the, the commission took that up because the Council of Governments is really just a, um, 
a consolidated purchasing service right. um, for the for the towns. And that's not what we that's not what the county is. We don't see ourselves as a consolidated um, organization that just provides specific services that are agreed upon through intermunicipal agreements. Who, does, who do we see ourselves as our constituency? Do we, see, do we see the what we serve, do we see our constituency as being the towns as an entity, or do we see it as being all these individuals across the region? What, who do we serve? And who do we represent? Who do we want to represent? Who should we represent to get to the goals that we say we want to have as a region? You know, in, in the League of Women Voters, um, the last panel that they had, you had a speaker, Dr. Oberson. 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 And he was talking, um, he was a professor of municipal and county law, and he was saying that a board of, you know, having a legislature or having that type of structure does not lend to regional solutions. It just doesn't doesn't lend itself well for people looking at things regionally. I mean, he said, you know, I, I don't live here, I am not going to get into it, but in my experience across the country, it doesn't lend to regional solutions. And what you're doing is you're putting an emphasis on town boundaries as opposed to, this is a regional government. So it needs, it's a different representation. It's not a board of selectmen. It is a regional government. So you need a re representatives, representatives that have a regional voice, which is within towns, not a town. So that's just my feeling of it. I mean, we disagree. Uh, Mary Lou, did you want to? Well, I just wanted to say that the, the League of Women Voters has uh, uh, I mean, they would not want to overlook the right of the citizen at all. I mean, that's the whole message of the League, is the citizen the right to vote. And uh, so that, that to me, is not, although it may be to Teresa, uh, we we protecting that. All of the, the way that the legislative section of this is set up means that you will vote for those representatives from those five districts and the at-large. The individual voter I think you're going to get, and this is going to have to be done well, and this is the challenge. This is not without risks nor challenges, as Mark said, but change never is without those. And change takes some courage. So this is going to, but to, to keep the citizens involved, to make this an election for that, those districts and the at-large, is going to take an effort to get out to the citizens, to involve them, to engage them, for those candidates, for those positions, to really connect to the voter. Right now, I don't, if, if they say the assembly, I don't even think people know who the, their assembly delegate is. I, every time I ran, I ran unopposed, not because of my ability, but because nobody even knew what the assembly was. I tried for 14 years to get that out there. So I don't think there's a great connection between the citizen and the assembly as it is now set up. I think you're going to get much more involvement by the citizen, that voter, through this method that we've set up now. And the more news is going to get back, if it's done well, if the Office of Public Information, which is going to be essential when you do this, right. is out there letting the citizens know. We're very not involving the citizens now. I don't think this is an issue be between towns versus the voter or the citizen. I think we're improving both services with a new direction. You're right. And, okay. and you know, the, the, the other thing, too, is that any kind of change has to be planned. Oh, yeah. And it we're now just having a discussion. But the planning for this change is going to take a lot of work, as you say, because it, and maybe one of the first things we have to do is, is create these districts and see what they are and what they look like. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that's, that's getting too far yeah. detailed. But the other mm -hmm. thing I wanted to mention was I listened to um, an interesting program on NPR the, the other morning. And it was on uh, big data. And I don't know if you heard this, but all the intelligence agencies in the country and in the world have put together this thing they call big data. And it is so big, it just 
they, they talked about the population of this country and how the, the information that they have been able to collect, not, not, I'm not talking about personal information, I'm just talking about information in general, just ex the number of gigabytes exceeds anything that you could possibly imagine. And one of the things, they, and as an example of what this is, is say we learned that a tsunami was going to hit Cape Cod. They said that this data is so incredible that you could actually manage the evacuation of a community um, minute by minute as the event is taking place because they have so much information available for particularly for public safety and emergency operations. It is absolutely incredible. And it's just coming out now. I mean, this was two days ago. I heard it on the radio, this whole program. And I thought, this is amazing. And then I was reading on different counties, <coughs> and particularly Fairfax County, because I used to live there. But the amount, the, the incredible availability of technology uh, is going to be is is going to create more efficiencies than we could ever imagine, even in the way of preparing a budget. That the with the um, uh, with the applications that software companies have been able to create, that creating a budget now could be simply um, a few clicks on, on a computer. It would be that easy because all the information is in the system. And all you want, all you need to do is to make uh, a few adjustments, and it'll tell you. I remember when I worked in Plymouth, um, I had what they called an HR database, and it was all kinds of information in there about payroll and and people's salaries and their what they were eligible for and all that. And the town manager would say to me, if if I wanted to give a two percent increase, how much would it cost? All I had to do was click on one. Uh, uh, aspect of the computer, and it would give me that information in like five seconds. You know, so, and that was a few years ago, but what's coming now is, and that's what, when you were saying, Mary Lou, we really, we are planning for the future. We're not planning for today. We're planning for a Cape Cod one, and especially when e -Cape, uh, Open Cape is out there, and the e-permitting and the rust is all available. The communication among towns on the Cape is going to blur the lines of the towns more than I think anything else possibly ever will. Because towns are going to be communicating with each other all the time. It's not going to be a phone call or an email, uh, what are you doing in, in sandwich, uh, how are you handling this. You, all you'll have to do is go right on your computer and you'll find out exactly what you need to know. So this is going to really, when we say that the Open Cape whole project is going to change the way we live and work on Cape Cod, it is. What we need to do now is to plan for that major adjust, adjustment that is occurring as we speak and being able to have an organization, uh, a regional government, that will be able to handle that. And that's kind of how I see it. So we, it, what it may have worked in the past, it may be working now, but will it work in the future? Maybe, maybe not. And I think that's what the special commission really said to us. This isn't the way you're doing things now. May be working, but they're not going to work in the future. And you really need to think about how to do that. When you look at um, the partnership that we have uh, through the commission with the IBM and the Smarter Cape, that comes from their Smarter Cities, and this is basically what you're speaking of. And if you yesterday was uh, Paul's uh, press conference on a sort of a demonstration. A demo draft of his of this application. So what? So you have lots of data, and there's always been lots of data. But now IBM and, and Google is getting in on the act, and different uh, you know NGOs that are uh, trying to make make uh, hay out of this, money out of this. You know, you're really being able to look at um, smarter streets, smarter. You know, how do you have these interactions? Um, Boston is doing an incredible initiative up in. Um, with IBM called Urban, I forget, the, I forget the name of it, but it's it's somewhat on the idea of a uh, smarter cape. But this was an example of now being able to take uh, all of the information that is being collected and has been collected for years about our water and our water bodies. So you have the MEP 
and you have all of this different information coming from all the citizens who have donated their time and have been vigilant in, in um, helping with these with this collection. You bring it in, and now you can actually uh, how you're saying that they've created algorithms. He and his you know his staff is is really pretty incredible, and they've worked very hard. But to be able to take that data and have it reflect reflect the problem with with a path to the solution. So you have what he was demonstrating yesterday is you have a sub watershed now that you can click on. You have the MEP laid over that. You have the land uh, use. You have the density of the population, and it gets right down to not only the density of the population, but the measurement between homes. So how much would it cost to put um, if you were going to go sewering? But however, you can then click on on different uh, modes of remedy, and it will give you that information. This is how much it's yeah, going to cost you if you go this way. But this is where we are going, and this is where we need to be able to work together, and it is all about the future, and it's... It what a great example of something that is happening right now, showing the effectiveness of our present county government, and the fact that we don't need any changes at all in order to effectuate but, that particular activity. But it's not, going like, it's not going like it should. It really isn't moving as fast forward as it should, because yeah. there's times we can put impediments in it. What? You know, it's 12 o'clock, and I think we're going to need to wrap this up for today. But it's certainly... Um, yeah, this is a great beginning. It was a good beginning, and I think um, what I'll do is put this information in a, in more of a, of a detailed summary, and then plan a discussion for the next time, because we have to keep moving forward. We don't want to keep talking about the same things over right. and over again. Each each step of the way, we have to move to uh, we have to move to some solution. But the first thing is we have to have a plan. All right. So thank you all for being here thank for you. that part of our discussion. And now we'll move on to the business of the day. Unless anyone has any other comments, they want to make. Beth was here, right? She 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 must have had something. Beth was here. Yeah, I have a thing here. So do you want me to call her back? Uh, let's see. Her her books and stuff are still here. Oh, she might be just coming down. Well, we can do our uh, minutes and yeah, we'll do that. I'll, I'll go Yeah. Okay, so we want to. We have two sets of minutes. Yes. Yes. We want to uh, a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Okay. So, um, we have to approve Do we have to approve each one separately? No. But as long as we have the dates in front of you. Yeah. Okay, so the meetings of the 14th and the 28th of March. To approve those minutes. I'll move second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, thank you. And uh, I looked at the, uh, the uh, summary of action. action. And, uh, and, uh, okay. And I will second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And Mark, do you have a comment? Uh, Beth was here. And, uh, well, I apologize. I should have tried to get this in at the beginning. But she is requesting a transfer you of have funds. your own personal so copy. I know you did it. resolution to the assembly associated with that. Uh, Janice is aware that's coming over. And so this uh, is? She, it's uh, 23,710. Is that how much is in there from her salary line? And there's an explanatory letter that oh, she's good. here for. Exactly. And basically, the, mem, the mass of motion can't oh, yeah. up some money in her salary account because they're using that money to pay for her machine. So she wants to use 23710 from salary and professional services, basically so she can continue some of her other initiatives, such as suicide prevention and Mass 211. So she wants to request 23710 be transferred from salary yep. into professional services. Right. services. So it's just changing a lot. And, but from salary, we have to go through this. Right, and, and also because of uh, the grant she received, she yeah. needs less money in salary and more money. Because some of the MIM grant is offsetting some of her salaries. Is offsetting her so salaries. So okay. I don't have a problem with it. A motion? Uh, yeah. I, I, I move that we approve that. And Madam Chair, you just have yeah, to no, sign it and then we have to bring it to the assembly. Okay. And it's a resolution, it's not an ordinance. So okay, those in favor say aye. 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 So Opposed? you move that bill? It's no work. Surely that that's good. Okay. Okay. I'm certainly in favor of it. Right. Okay. Good. So. Um, so somebody should let Bill uh, Sheila, uh, Sheila, Bill Beth. Sheila, Beth, that's the one I'm looking for. Right, so this is, these are the two documents that go to the assembly. Yeah, you can bring those. Okay. Over, yeah. Um, 
And uh, what else did I have? I went over the assembly budget schedule with you last week. Uh, you should have gotten your law day invitation. I did. In the mail. Mm -hmm. When is it? Well, Tuesday. I did the mail it's did uh, you take mine it's Tuesday? May. May 1st. May 1st. Mm -hmm. First district court. What time? Uh, you should be there. What kind of clock is here, it's in here. Usually starts first thing in the morning. I don't see it here, so you can take mine. I don't see a time on there, but it usually starts. I thought it started Bill, first thing in the morning. Oh, it just says May first. Yeah. So they want you there. It's usually at eight thirty, but I can get some clarification on that. And then I thought, uh, Madam Chair, that we should maybe have Darlene come in next week so that she could uh, we. Could give her some recognition for the award that she's getting from the Mass Association of Conservation Commission. Oh, Did you see that? Yes. There was a no, press I didn't see that. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, everybody <coughs> should have gotten our yeah. annual report. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are required by law mm -hmm. to publish an annual report. Uh, Elaine Davis, our purchasing director and staff at Cooperative Extension, um, help, put, help put those things together so I think they've done another excellent job. Yes, they have. And I think the point That's to make, because we, I did get some, um, yeah. some pushback on this, we do not publish thousands of these, we just publish 200 of them. Yeah, I think she, we, we have to, and we're required to do a, a physical annual report. So. Also, the Harvard Chamber of Commerce is inviting us to a legislative <coughs> breakfast on April 20th. We did this last year, remember? And we'll pass it in. It's hugely attended. Hmm. You, um, what, what date is that? April 20th, April 20th. Friday. Hmm. At what time? Um, 7.45. Breakfast is at 8. Registration, 7.45. So, Mark, maybe you could um, have you Kara register. Sure. Yes. Yeah, that I wasn't oh, aware of. So I'll, I'll, I'll give that. you that. Sure. 7.45 on April 20th. It's the BOS. What's the conservation? It's the Harwich. Um, it's a request it? It's a Chamber of Commerce, isn't oh, it? Oh, Chamber is of Commerce. Is it a request it in? Yes. Yep. Okay. Friday, April 20th. Breakfast at 8. Registration at 745. All three of you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't let them come into town without my being. Yeah. I thought the requisite was in Chatham. Yeah, it's right on the border, yeah. Uh, the requisite uh, has a post office box in Chatham, but yeah. they pay their taxes in Harwich. Thank goodness, huh? Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah, they're huge. We love them. We love them in Harwich. And now everybody loves the money they produce. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful venue. Oh, it is. I mean, why would you not well, want to go there? So, um... I, I won't make the law day. I'm not sure if I will. I will try. Oh, yeah. <coughs> You're not gonna, you I won't make you, the law day. Are you going to go to the law day? Don't you let them know? I will uh, try, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. Okay. Well. Still on session. Well, with the wind blowing. Okay. Just barely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the lookout. Yeah. Yeah. Just the wind blowing. Yeah. 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 Catching the tail end here. Yeah. 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 Uh, you guys jabbering. changed your meeting. When I left, it was about noon. We did change, and, and then actually we changed because Bill was going to go to a dentist appointment, and then he ended up changing. Well, well my doctor's appointment trumps your dentist appointment. Oh, there you go. <laughs> may I have the floor? Yes, sure. you may have the floor. Please introduce yourself. I am David Schroffer. You have a seat. Uh, now. So oh, people are not looking at your back. Thank you. Um, I previously submitted to the uh, O'Leary and. Uh, Rochenbach uh, Committee, a proposal about five commissioners. Thank you. Uh, what this says is, I still stand by that. I realize you have added, or they added, two Cape White commissioners, uh, which I have no objection to. What I'm concerned about is, I listened to uh, the members of the assembly who are, I think, almost unanimous in their uh, disapproval of this process. But if the structure is that the commissioners bless you, bless you. hire the executive. And, and this is the same, you're, you're creating a structure that's exactly like the towns. The mm -hmm. towns 
uh, chief executive officer is the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. They have a town administrator or manager who is solely reports to them. Uh, so you can't have another layer in there because you then split who that person reports to. However, the town still need a voice. So my thought was, if you look at the town structure again, town structures have a finance committee. The finance committee is almost always non-binding. They vote, the town meeting sees their vote, but it's non-binding. And um, that would be a structure. It would be the same process except that if it's the voice of the town, it should not be elected by the uh, people. It should be appointed by the elected selectmen, who are the chief executive officers. It's their understanding of what's going on in the town that needs to be communicated to the, to the uh, Marshall County Commissioners and also to the uh, executive. I would add two provisos. One is that both uh, the commissioners at least once a month and the executive uh, once a month would meet with the uh, what I'm calling the um, Town Representatives Advisory Board. It's the assembly without the power to overrule. So we have three uh, names for this, because Mary Lou has proposed it too, and her, her, I guess the special commission, they, they called it an intermunicipal advisory board. Advisory board. Well, it's already gone full circle, babe. I, I kind of like Council of Governments, because it is kind of a cog, and if it was no. if it was represented by town managers, they are the real voice. Number one, they're appointed and they know everything that's going on in town and what their needs are. So I think that they would. I mean, this is who are we to be saying this? But that that's how I would. Um, you know, I could be but proposed then, a different structure. But you wouldn't want to call it a council, though. No, you well, don't. our commission of government. Council of, 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 of uh, government is what Franklin County. Right, I know. And that is a different structure and a weaker structure than right. part of the yeah. Exactly. But I mean, it's sort of like, but it is some sort of, or, you, you can call it whatever you want, but I, I get exactly what sort of. Okay. Um, so anyhow, like there's a, 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 a rationale which I've already just explained to you, and that was my thought, and I'm sorry I couldn't be here. Uh, it, was <laughs> it was fascinating. It was a fascinating well, discussion. No, it actually was pretty good. And then, uh, you know, I, I would, we did hear. I'd like to add one thing for the record, and that is that I know of no body of organization, especially political, that has ever voted to rule itself out of existence. So your methodology cannot be to go through the assembly. There's nothing that they will accept other than their process, which disenfranchises all but four of the towns. Four towns, and Falmouth is one of those, uh, Barnesville and other, and Yarmouth, and uh, probably could add them Sandwich, or one or two other cho choices. They control. Right. And uh, there is a risk with the two uh, uh, Cape Boy appointees that they could both come from the same town, and in addition, have uh, also elected one of the other five. Yeah, that, that would have to be something that would have to be looked at, as far as, because I agree with you, you don't want to have, there should be, it's not good to have two from the same town. So um, it wouldn't work as, as, as it stands now, and I don't think it would. So that would have to, the, the law on that would have to, the yeah. specifics be hammered and up. My last point is, uh, one man, one vote does not apply in this instance because you are really dealing with the towns, not with the people. Right. You're Thank dealing you with oh, geography. Oh, you mean in terms of the Finance Advisory Committee no, or whatever it's, it's called? No, we're talking about the Assembly. It, 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 the Assembly not, structure doesn't represent. Not the assembly, I agree, yes, not the Assembly structure. Oh, the Assembly that, structure. The, the, um, the Town Representative Advisory Board is what I'm calling, uh, would be one town, one vote. The issue of the commissioners is the problem. Right. The, the Cape White ones would be one person, one vote. But what do you do about the ones that are regional? If those regional appointees are, are, are elected people by would be... By district. But that has to be by population. They have population. to be approximately equivalent. Yep. Yeah. Uh, to, equivalent population. But yeah. the difficulty is that we aren't broken up that way. We are broken up into disequal... We started to talk about that. There's a, yeah. There is some technical issues associated yeah. with that. Right. Yeah. And there's they pros did. and cons, but yeah. they would have to be flushed out more of what... Yeah. Mostly, Dave, because the towns conduct the uh, election. Right. So, you right. either mirror town wards some way, you can split them up into two different districts, but they have to be by town ward. And otherwise, it still does that, and, and, and it, it, it still disenfranchises the towns who are the ones that are dealing with the issues uh, that the county is dealing with. I mean, you basically get service to the, to the towns. Um, and by the way, doing a great job at that, and it's expanding. What do you feel about it being partisan and nonpartisan? 
Now, uh, I will preface this by saying I am chairman of the Democratic Party of East Ham. I still would recommend it be nonpartisan. Same here. So if so, say you had a district election, ten people ran, and it's nonpartisan, so there's no primary. So you have ten people on the ballot. You could theoretically have someone elected with eleven percent of the vote. However, look at every single town we have, and all of those seconds since I've been here for fourteen years, and there's never been anything like that in the town. I no. can imagine that would happen to the, to the, to the right. county. Right. But three or four or five, which could is. Happen. Yeah. Right. 20%, 25%. Yeah. 20%. But, yeah. That's the only trouble with that. Yeah, we Mark, you raise a very good point, and one of the most, I'm town moderator, one of the really disturbing things is 5% of the town shows up and they determine what the town's going to do. Right. 5%. So. Right, yeah. uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the day we wax poetically about town meeting, but it really isn't the democratic process that yeah. it was back when there was only 50 people in the village and they had nothing else to most do but show up at uh, show up at town meeting. Well, well, <laughs> philosophically, I agree with the nonpartisan piece because of the you know, because of we we tend to act we have, we do act in a nonpartisan way. The fact that you if you run at large, if you run across the district, you have to have some structure that exists. That would support you, you know, that you could go to every four years, and they and they they have a moral imperative to put out signs for you, and, and and basically help you stuff envelopes and things. If you did it in a nonpartisan way, you know, Sheila suggested that both parties would town committees would welcome you, and I was a, I have been a chair of the of my town committee, and you're a present chair of your town committee, and although. You might think it's a great idea in the car, which I used to meet with Ray Gottwald, who was chair of the Republic of the Democratic Town Committee, and we would put on uh, voter nights, and I've carried that out when I on my I run this political pattern program during election cycles, where I've invited both sides to come in and, and speak to what you know what their issues are. But I don't think that that's my experience is that that's that attitude is not reflected universally. So well, that's because, it, it, and I think that it would help. That attitude, you've got, you missed that one. Oh, um, I think I missed one. Because you don't, you know, what I was saying to Bill is some people, you know, even when you're out getting signatures or anything, you'll say, I'm a Democrat. They don't even, that's the end of you. Now, you might have, and, and vice versa, you know, the person says they're a Republican, but Democrats just recoil and say, oh. So we're at that point. It's not politics the way it used to, where, where Democrats and Republicans can you know, argue out issues and then go for a beer at night at the end of the day. There's no, none of that anymore. And I think that by being allowed into both camps, you could actually foster some, you could bridge some of those conversations and, and maybe we could um, help some of the uh, illness that has, has seeped into our political world. But also I see, that, um, I, I agree with you, first of all, Bill, that, that that is very helpful to have a support structure, especially if you're running KY. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is something to consider. But on the other hand, uh, parties have a tendency to stand for certain principles. And those principles, for the most part, are at the state and federal level, not We're so much set. at the town level. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Nice, nice job. You've not been royal. And I have been accused of not being a royal member of my party. <laughs> <laughs> With all of this, and I, and I think this is what frames the discussion that we've been having in my mind, is that we do have to protect what we have, but we also have to make wise choices for what we need. And I've said that in, you know, in all my election cycles, and I, and, I, and I say it often enough that I believe it, uh, and that and I'm very concerned that, we, that the discussion that we have about, the, you know, about the, uh, the positive and negative pieces of it informs what we will do. You know, it will inform what we will do when we go to the, you know, go to the public you know, with a say with a proposal as to what we're you know what our intentions are. The the other piece is that it, it's not framed out enough in my own mind that have we in our discussion. I think we should get to a point of what the charter allows us to do without getting legislative action. Because my observation of legislative action is that although in the, in the 2000 election cycle that we did this, we got 75% of the people that come out in support of the county and in, in in the changes we're proposing in the charter of regional government, and then went up and died up, mm -hmm. you know, up at the state house. So I don't have a great amount of hope that even if we came up with something that was gold-plated and, and everybody was behind it, that we would get a lot of support 
for legislative action. Yeah. We that's our job. That's to our job. Meet with them it's and educate a different them and get them on board before we ever file it. it, it just, before it even goes to the ballot, they have to be on board. Just with to, it. The, the charge is clear. If you want to change the commissioners, the county administrator, or the assembly of delegates, you got to go to the legislature. You got to go to the voters and the legislature. Right. So we can we can say all we want, but I mean, I, I think that there's, you know, it's a different time. Uh, we had different issues. We had the sheriff tied to us at that I time. I was going to mention that's really what Why, held up what held the up that thing. charter change. Right. It really wasn't the substantive or you know or minor changes we made within the charter. Those were approved by the voters. Those went through. The really hold-up piece at the State House was that last section that we did, right. which was to effectuate the transfer of the sheriff to the state. That didn't happen without legislation. It didn't happen until, what, 2010? Yeah. 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 And I've talked to some of our state reps, and uh, they, they like what we're doing, and they agree that they want to be a part of it, and they want to understand it. Because so they want to support it too, but you, we have to just we have to communicate. And I think if you're in agreement, that's one of the key yes. words. They are supportive of home rule petitions. Mm -hmm. I think that you find they, that statewide. And if the voters voted, chances are they will they will support it. I thank you for accommodating me. Oh, listen, no, we're moment. glad you came. So that was what are you doing good. now? Sorry. What are you doing now? I have my next meeting is at two o'clock. I moved that meeting so that I could do twelve to two here. Oh, but then this oh, so I now I have two hours. But I, I have to well, thank it. you for taking the time to writing them down. And, so we are still in by. session. So thank oh, you. we're still in session. Okay, thanks, David. Okay, so what else are we going on with? You're, you're still uh, that's recording. It. I'm done. Yeah, I'm, yeah. You, so we either need a motion to adjourn or. Um, or review of your... No, I don't make a motion to adjourn. Well, if, if, if I might just mention this. We're planning to go to uh, 2.30 to uh, the assembly to... Uh, oh, yeah, 2 o'clock, isn't it? 2.30. Oh, it's 2.30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Uh, are we going to be uh, doing any action over there, or are we just, uh, are we just prepared to speak on... Uh, well, let's talk the about their agenda. Board. Their yeah. agenda today is... At 2.30 is the, the finance, committee, uh, the finance committee. committee meeting, and we and were asked to go to speak in favor right. of, of the 75,000. Uh, was it the SID or S the SIO office? The Russ. It's, I think it's the, it's the it's, Russ. It's the Russ. It's the 75,000. It's, so, it's not called the SIO. No, no, no but yes. it's, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, but it's, it's oh, sort I, of. I, well, I want to make sure that we're here. What we're going over to talk about, we're all. Yeah, and I think Palm Zuki's going to be here as well. Yeah. I mentioned it yesterday in the press conference. I, I don't have the agenda for the assembly, but I don't think there was anything specific about the special commission on their agenda. I think the only point was that mm -hmm. Janice was making mm -hmm. to us was that they had voted on every other issue of the committee that they did not vote on this. Well, well, this is another. This is this is sort of what we. Well, it's different, but it, it was a strategic information office of what we were, you know, going towards uh, three years ago, uh, or being able to have money to have towns come to us. Well, as it turns out, the towns did come to us and they want these services. But um, the fact that it's held up and it couldn't make it through going into as a recommendation um, is, again, an example <laughs> of how you had 15 towns, 14 towns sign up for, for such a concept. And there will be, if they don't vote for it, it's, it's not. It's going to have a little disconnect yeah. with the assembly. I think they'll be shining a light on uh, what the points are that people so, are making. So we need to think about. So we can. So that's what at two thirty. Well, I, I think the biggest argument you can say is okay. Fifty, fourteen towns think it's a great idea. It is a move towards the future. It's going in you know, making things more efficient. We got the grant. That the grant. Uh, that was part, that was part of it. This is our contribution to making this thing happen. Right. To make it. That's why we put the money in the budget. Right. We so, didn't have a specific intent, but we knew that we had to have some funds in there for regional services, and we were hoping that when the grant was approved, that that would be our contribution. Since we have decided that we are going to be the administrator of the Russ, right? right? Well, we're going to... Okay. So we're all in agreement, we're all in agreement. On, yes. on that. Okay. okay. I thought it was useful to 
Make sure we're all That's good. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Any other business? If not, a motion to adjourn? Okay. I'll move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. We are adjourned at 1225. Okay.